What's up YouTube? What's going on guys? So today I want to do a video a little bit differently. I'm going to do it in a voiceover style. Normally speaking, I like to do my videos free flowing and just kind of give off the information from the top of my head because I do feel I understand it to a high enough degree where I can do that and get across everything I want to say. However, sometimes there's, are, there are going to be videos where I really would like to transition to more of a um, voiceover style where I can really plan out ahead of time what I want to say and kind of read from a prompt that I write everything out and really get across some more more complex ideas and so that's what we're going to do today I won't do this too often because it's really become the flavor of the month on YouTube and so many youtubers are doing it in such a cinematic way and for me I don't care for all that flair I just want to get across good information so let's start this up um, today I wanted to talk about getting and staying lean it's a very simple theoretical process that most of us desire to achieve yet the application of actually carrying this out proves to be somewhat difficult in practice I suppose that's what makes it attractive in the first place anyway. So what's something that can help us achieve this difficult feat? This is very simple. Strength. The most overlooked component to looking great is something most high-level powerlifters have known for a while. Just take a look at these top-tier powerlifters and you'll realize quickly that the old myth of powerlifters being fat is at best only applicable to the heavier weight classes and at worst pretty much wrong. Let's talk about this in detail. We've all seen it, that somewhat new trainee that we all hate and they walk into the gym and do sets of eight on squats without really breaking much of a sweat. While it may be difficult for them because they've never done anything like that before, their actual body output, the amount of energy they need to exert is very low and they can get through their sets relatively easy. Yet watch a powerlifter squat one semi-maximal set of eight and you'll see his soul leave his body for a brief moment. Why does this happen and what can it teach us in regards to body composition? The why is complicated, so I'll save that for a detailed explanation ahead. However, the answer to the latter is one of my secrets for staying lean year-round. Strength. Quite simply, getting strong causes us to burn a crap ton of calories in the same style of workout as when we are a little bit weaker. Brendan, how do you eat so many calories without getting fat? Are you just genetically blessed, or do you do a lot of cardio? This is one form of the many of the same question I get asked constantly on my Instagram through DM when I post videos and stories of what I'm eating. People are floored that I consume about 3,800 calories during my cutting phases, and in the off-season can eat upward of 5,000 calories to lean bulk. Yet a quick look at my nutritional logs when I initially started lifting, and you'll realize I was consuming over 1,000 calories less to achieve the same caloric deficit as my current intake when losing body fat. What's changed? Honestly, the only thing is my strength. While some of you more red viewers will say it's due to the amount of muscle mass I've put on, I'd reply by saying that isn't true. There's an old adage that for every pound of muscle you put on, you burn this extra 50 calories out of nowhere. Where this came from, I'm really unsure of. But this study by Zimian Wang, Zillian Ying, and Manfred J. Muller, and I hope I pronounced this correctly, showed that at best an extra pound of muscle utilizes a whole six calories. While I'd love to believe I've added over 166 pounds of muscle to my frame to achieve this extra thousand calories I burned in a day, I know that isn't true. In actuality, it's my strength. Here's why. We know that the stronger you are, the more neurologically adapted to the movements you're training you are. This in turn causes a higher recruitment of high threshold motor units. It's just a fancy way of saying all the fast switch muscle fibers that produce the high force contractions get activated a lot more than someone who isn't as strong or who isn't as neurologically adapted. To put simply, the stronger we get, the more total muscle fibers we utilize and the more total work we're able to achieve. This is why you'll see tiny women who don't look very muscular compared to a bodybuilder, yet they're extremely strong. They utilize more motor units to move more weight, which in turn causes a higher demand of energy. Don't just take my word for it though. Look at this study yourself by Brown SP et al. 1994, where they found that total energy expenditure was directly related to the amount of work being done. The more weight on the bar, the more energy demanding the lift was, even if relative difficulty remained the same. Guys who are deadlifting 300 pounds will burn double what guys deadlifting 150 pounds will. Now add this up with multiple major compound movements and you get a huge increase in energy expenditure from simply just getting stronger on all your basic compound lifts. Now some more astute viewers will probably still question this in my anecdotal example of myself that I just offered. You could exclaim that maybe I was working out easier back then or simply just doing less volume or perhaps that I was more active in my daily life. What I can tell you about my own experiences is back when I was consuming that 2,600 calories to lose fat, I was working as a personal trainer and always on my feet for about five to eight hours a day. I also trained more as a bodybuilder and was doing more total sets and training with more total reps. Currently I work from home as a coach and do everything on my computer and I'm also far less recreational 
recreationally active as I don't hike as often these days. I used to hike about four to five times a week back then. Put simply, I'm burning way less calories now during non-training hours than I was back then, yet my energy expenditure is much higher these days. This is simply just due to me getting stronger. My current deadlift max is around 688 pounds with room in the tank and I could probably pull 700 pounds on any given day. And my best set of nine on deadlifts is with 555 pounds. Back then my deadlift max was 405 pounds and my best set of nine was with 315 pounds. So what are some takeaways here? If you're someone looking to get and or stay lean year round, I would encourage strength to be one of your primary goals as it will make this a thousand times easier being able to enjoy a lot more food. If you're someone with specific goals in other areas such as bodybuilding or sports, I would at least encourage you to have some serious dedicated strength phases. This will only help you in many ways while making your job of maintaining or obtaining a lower body fat percentage a lot easier. Hope this video all taught you some really good lessons and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Thumbs up the video. I'm sure this was super cringy to hear me read off from like something I wrote out, but I hope the points here were explicitly explained to you and you guys can understand this stuff. So give it a thumbs up. Give me some love guys. And I'll talk to you next time.